Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I am your host Mark Fusco and we're here for another edition of uh, the show. Oh, everything's... No, that's right. Anyway, thought they were reversed. Um, thanks for coming in. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody uh, for, for watching the show. I'm getting a lot of views now and um, really appreciate it. I mean, we're getting to, you know, upwards of 30 views per episode on the website. Um, in, in the low teens on Blip TV, or I host the, the podcast on Blip TV, but a lot of people are watching it on Blip TV instead of uh, actually the podcast. If you, if you uh, look to the the right, you're right, um, you'll see that there's a, uh, a link for iTunes. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast. You know, that's what I do. I, I listen to podcasts on, on here, but I watch them on the TV. Of course, I'm, that means I'm not really going to the websites, am I? But anyway... So uh, what we got? What we have today? We have, and I'm really excited about this. And I'm probably going to butcher this, but we'll try. We have the 2005 Yurtschis uh, Sonhof Mozart uh, Gruner Weltliner. Um, I was really trying not to say it really bad, but uh, it's it's just difficult to say the word. But uh, anyway. Uh, it's 2005, I already said that. Got it for uh, $7.88 at World Market. It's our first uh, Groovy, as they say. Uh, Gruner Veltliner is a varietal that is grown primarily in uh, Central Europe, um, in Austria, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, a little bit in Hungary, uh, and, and not grown really much anywhere else. I mean, there's probably plots of land here and there that they grow it. So... Um, Man, it's really taken over the room already. So let's uh, check it out. If you've never had a Groovy or Gruner Veltliner, um, this is actually, I think, only my third or fourth ever. Um, it's my first, like, at home having it, but I've had it in restaurants. And, uh, you know, I've, before I remember, I like it. Nice little gold color here. Uh, almost matches the, the little metal thing there. Screw cap enclosure. Made it real easy. Uh, it's only 12% alcohol, um, so it's not going to really hit you too hard. It's an interesting nose. I don't know, maybe like peach? Peaches maybe? I was reading their uh, tasting notes, and they said something about white pepper. You know, I've smelled white pepper once uh, at the restaurant I used to work at. I couldn't tell you if that's in there or not, but um, I know that's a that's a an aroma that you can get. I don't get any kind of pepper though, but I'm getting mostly peaches. It's pretty decent. Let's check it out. Try that again. So it's um it's really tart. Um I wouldn't say it's like a tart peach, but it's very it's a very tart, you know, like kind of puckering up. Um and there's acid there, uh, but you're getting that, getting that 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 kind of you know sour candy, and I don't mean like a, you know the sour candy type of taste. A little bit of sugar, not a lot. decent. Um, if you really like that sour and tartness, um, almost like a sour green apple with a mix of peach and something else I can't, maybe that's that white pepper. 
Yeah, I think I'm starting. I mean, it, it smells peppery. I'm kind of, you know, getting that uh, that residual aroma now. When I exhale through my nose, that's another thing. Like, you know, how the back of your head, it's, you know, the, your nose is connected to your throat and all that. And that's how you really, that's really how you taste. Because everything kind of goes back up into your nose. Well, yeah, maybe that's how that white pepper taste is. I like it. It's, you know, for, for $8, it's, it's pretty decent. It was originally $12.99 at World Market, so we're talking a $13 bottle of wine uh, that they marked down. Um, it's pretty good. I, I'd probably give it um, give it an 85. You know, it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, I have a feeling that my scores tend to be really harsh, um, and maybe it's because I don't want to really be giving too high a score for anything, but, um, you know... 85 sounds pretty good for that. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, the winery real quick. So um, the, I'm going to try it again. The Yurtschitz, or you know, it sounds like I'm going to say Yurt, Yurtschitz, but it's Yurt, Yurtschitz, Yurtschitz, okay, Sonhof. Um, the Sonhof estate has actually been around, they say, for like 700 years. Um, they had their first records in the 1500s of the actual written records of the place, and they talked about that the cellar's been around since the 14, um, since the 14th century. So, you know, that's 700 years. <laughs> but um, the actual family took over, which is the Yershitz, uh family, uh, took over in 1868, 1869. Um, we're actually out of time, but I'm going to run through this real quick. Uh, this particular label commemorates the 250th anniversary of Mozart's birth. Uh, and real briefly, uh, apparently the, this, this actual brand, it's not really called Mozart, but this actual um, style of, of Gruner Veltliner that they produce, they have an artist produce the label every year. So this was in, to commemorate the 250th anniversary of Mozart's birth. Mozart, he's the man. Dude, he was pimp. Um, told you I was a musician at one time, right? Well, that's my degree. So uh, it's matured, it's uh, fermented in stainless steel, aged in stainless steel. Uh, it's in the Comptal region of Austria, or, or you know, uh, not region, but they're, I guess like an AOC. Um, and it's a north, it's a, little, a really small region in the northeastern corner of Austria. And for Gruner Veltliner, 36% of the grapes planted are Gruner Veltliner. Um, and there's a little thing of just, I gotta say this, uh, a little thing about, uh, apparently there was this antifreeze scandal in 1985. Um, you can make sweet wines out of this, um, and they can make some sparkling wines out of it too. But apparently the producer, there were some producers that were trying to make sweet wine, and you guessed that they put small amounts of antifreeze because sugar was too easily detected. They just add sugar, and it was cheaper to do that than the you know get the sweeter wines. Um, and, uh, yeah, so apparently they put antifreeze in here. Not this particular bottle, you know, but 20-some-odd years ago they, they did. And they said it was such a small amount. Like, you had to drink, like, 28 bottles a day for two weeks to have any adverse effects. But never thought you'd have antifreeze in your wine, huh? All right, so definitely recommend it. Um, click the links. Uh, friend me up on Twitter, Facebook. Um, uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, email me. Um, I'm also a member of the Wine Whore Crew, so if, 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 yeah, exactly how it sounds. So hopefully I'll be getting some uh, some other wine from from uh, being in that program, and uh, we'll do some stuff. If you're in the San Antonio area, or if you go online, uh, just going to give some props to some people down here in San Antonio. Um, San Antonio Express News, if you go to mysa.com, I'll just try to find the actual link to the article. Um, we got uh, General Manager of Brasserie Paville uh, talking about Twitter along with Colleen Pence and uh, Allison Hain, which here's her picture in the back, you probably can't see it very well, uh, talking about Twitter and using it with your businesses and stuff like that. So a little shout out to them. And because uh, uh, Colleen was one of the people, one of the presenters at the Tweet Camp uh, here in San Antonio a couple weeks ago. Uh, some great stuff. Um, if you're not on Twitter and you're a business, you need to get on there. It's, it's part of the puzzle, not the whole puzzle. Um, I guess I've rambled enough. It's probably over 10 minutes. We'll see everybody again next time.